Hello, this is John with Bracer Comics and Gaming, and we're starting a new feature where we talk to younger players, younger readers about like, what interests them in terms of what we carry, whether it be comic books, board games. Um, today we're focusing on role-playing games, and our guest here is, today is... Jacob. And Jacob here is a D&D player, right? Yes. So, who introduced you to, to Dungeons and Dragons? Um, actually, my dad's friend, Mr. Donovan, ran a one-shot for my ninth birthday. Okay. Then after that, we just started getting into more one-shots and just started into normal campaign. Now, now, for the people who don't know, what is a one-shot? A one-shot is a game that you don't have to constantly, like, it's in one sitting. You don't have to keep running the game. It's probably around like three or four hours. So it's better for a beginner player yeah. to do a one shot because there's not as much, much investment of time and preparation. Yes. Um, now, I'm not a role player myself, but my understanding is a lot of the one shots have what they call pre constructed characters. Now, what exactly is a pre constructed character? It's a character that the DM will make for all the characters, and they normally will probably just get to choose which one they want out of different classes. Okay. Um, so that. So that way they, don't, they can skip the whole making their own character. Yes. Um, how long does making your own character generally take? Um, probably around 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. Now, out of the two ways, pre-constructed or not, which one is your favorite? I like making them because I get to choose, like, this class. I get to choose, like, what it's like, what the character does, how it acts. Okay. So, you said classes. What exactly are classes? They're, like... Um, so they're like healers, they're like tanks, they're just like the person, like the character that the person is. So my class that I prefer would be a paladin, which is the tank person in the class, but um, there are healers, um, there are paladins, there are rogues, there are wizards, there are sorcerers, and much more. And each one has their own... Like thing that they're unique at, right? Yes. Okay, so like a paladin is a tank, is a tank uh, so like the strong guy in the or strong yeah. gal in the, in the group. Um, healers, I assume, are, are people who yeah. like support the group. Mm -hmm. um, well, you said a rogue. So what is a um, rogue strong at? A rogue is strong with stealth and just being sneaky. Okay. Um, and what's the next? Mm -hmm. Sorcerers and wizards. Okay, what do they do? Um, they're spellcasters, only when you stand in the back, and they'll just be the ones like fireballing everybody. Okay. Um, so if you were building, if you were a beginner player, what would you recommend as like a good group consistency for to make it balanced for? Um, definitely one or two healers, probably a paladin, um, a fighter, and then a wizard sorcerer. Okay. Um, and I skipped over this question. I meant to ask you one of the earlier, earlier ones. You said you started on your ninth birthday. How long have you been playing now? Um, for about a year. About a year? Um, uh, I believe your dad told me that you ran a uh, D&D session for your, for your friends. Yes. Uh, how long did that one last? That was a very long one shot. That lasted like five or six hours. Yeah. Um, and I think he said you guys constructed like your own dungeons and, and things like that. Yeah, so we have 3D printers, okay. so we 3D printed out a bunch of tiles and a bunch of decorations and made a full dungeon on a table. Okay. Uh, how long did it take you to do all that? Um, to create the dungeon and make it, it took a pretty long time. To probably get it all prepared, it took like a month. Were you excited with how, how it turned out? Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, now, talking about dungeons and miniatures, I know some people see that we carry all the miniatures that we do. Um, are they necessary for the game? Um, they're not as important, but it's like, once you get more into it, if you want, like, you want your character to be shown, so, yes, and, like, once you get into it, you want one, but in the beginning, it's not as important. Okay. I know some people like to choose one that they feel represents their character very well, and they get one that very personal, personal to them. Um, are you in that same, same boat also? Um, pretty much, yeah. So which one is your favorite that you've created so far? Um, it would have to be my first character. I kind of roll with him a lot. Um, Jax. Okay. Paladin. Okay. And what level is he at now? Um, I don't know. Probably. Um, level five, I think. Okay. So, let's say somebody wanted to jump into Dungeons and Dragons now. Um, I 
know one of the things that's kind of like a roadblock for some people is when they come in and we and they ask us like what they need and we show them the three um, main core books. Uh, the three core books, I believe you have two of them right there. If you want to show, yeah. show them to them. So we have the Dungeon Master Guide, we have the Player's Handbook, and then the last one we do not have here, but it is the Monster Manual. Oh. And so if you wanted to start playing, which one would you start with? Definitely the Player's Handbook. The Player's Handbook. And as I said, when people come in, they see like a 200, 300 page book. And they get intimidated by that. How would you ease their their reservations because of that? The book isn't really meant to be read. In, like it's not meant to just read every page. It's meant to give you the information you need. So you just skim through the book and you find the pages you need and you read those like one or two pages. And because this goes back to what you're talking about for classes, right? So there's maybe like three to five pages, maybe ten pages dedicated to whatever your specific character is. So you don't really need two hundred to three hundred pages. Yeah. You need a portion of the Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, if you want to run the game, you would need the Dungeon Master's Guide and the yes. Monster Handle, right? So, what do you think is the main thing people need to know if they are running a game from the, from the Dungeon Master's Guide? Um, that you really make up the rules for the game. It's not like the Dungeon Master Guide gives the rules. The rules you make up. You and the characters will make up the rules. The game, like, the rules are just for fun. Okay. And I know one of the things that people love about Dungeons and Dragons is it can be anything you want it to be. It can be fantasy, it can be modern. Like, again, it's just the framework. You lay everything on top of that. Um, I, I think you mostly play fantasy, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's say that people are still intimidated by the three books. What would you recommend they start with? Um, I'd start out by reading the Player's Handbook, um, and i start out by probably reading all the classes. Okay. What about the two box sets then? Um, if we were going to start playing, you'd probably use the essentials kit because okay. it's for smaller groups. Okay. But if you like you had, that yeah, but if you had a bigger group, then what you'd want to do is you'd want to use the starter kit because it has basically all the rules you need and it has dice and a bunch of other things for it. Okay, so you said the essential one is for a smaller group. What do you consider a smaller group? Um, around like two to five people. Okay, and the starter group, or starter set is for a larger group, which would be? Um, like five or six. Okay. Um, now I know one of the big things in Dungeons and Dragons also is the app, um, D&D Beyond. How is this useful for, for um, like new players? It's a way to make your characters online and it's like, basically, it's not like you just have to look at your phone. You can make your character online, and then you can just print it out, and you can like you can get all the stuff for your bag and everything. And it's just really a really simple app and really easy to use. Okay, and it helps you create your character yeah. pretty quickly. If you use that, you'd probably create your character in fifteen to twenty minutes. Okay, so it goes down like 10, 15 minutes, maybe twenty minutes from the, yeah. from the creation of the characters. Uh, I know you also play video games. Uh, how different like, is the are the two in terms of from the video games I play in that they're like a whole step in front um, because basically the D and D you can create whatever you want there's no rules it's a new layout games like Fortnite and other stuff and you like you stick to one thing you don't get to choose what you do it's it more linear do. whereas in Dungeons and Dragons you pick your own choices. So, you said you've been a player and a Dungeon Master. Which one is your favorite to be? Definitely the Dungeon Master. It's a lot of fun. Okay. And why is that? Um, you get to kill people and you get to choose, <laughs> um, like, your monsters and you can throw them at people. Yeah. It's really fun, though. So, you said your the campaign that you ran, or the one shot you ran, was... Oops. Well, we're actually not open yet. I'm sorry. We don't, we don't open until noon. Sorry, we're also filming something. Sorry about that. Uh, give us like 10 more minutes. Um, I forgot to lock the door behind us. Um, so you said it took five to six hours for your first book, for the one that you created. How long did it take you to create that sort of? Um, that plan, it probably took about 
took around like two days to create the layout of the one shot, and then I just had to get all the characters together, create the setting, and a bunch of stuff like that. Okay. And so in closing, um, and this is going to be a series of videos, this is more just the introductory guy, so in closing, what, what do you feel, or who do you feel would be very interested in Dungeons and Dragons? Who, who would you recommend it to? Um, a lot of people that like like art, like making things, like painting, to use your imagination a lot and doing that. Okay. And do you think that there's an age, a beginning age, or do you think almost any age as long as they're interested in the? In the... Uh, basically, as long as you can read it and play it. Okay. Alright, well thank you guys for watching, and Jake will join us again at another time to go over the um, specifics of, of creating your own characters and, and creating your own adventures. We'll, we'll do probably half hour videos each time, I'm going to try to keep it pretty, pretty short so um, people don't lose interest, but hopefully you enjoyed this one, hopefully we can do some more very soon, and we hope to see you soon.